Welcome to another Debaco University video. Here looking at soil's importance in forensic science. So something we may not necessarily always take into consideration, particularly for outdoor sites, but can also sometimes apply to indoor sites is the understanding of soil. So first off, I figure I should define what soil basically is. And it's the upper layer of the earth where plants grow and is composed of a mixture of minerals, water, uh, grasses, and organic decaying remains. Rocks that are broken down and mixed with organic materials from living organisms. So here we see the earthworm here in the top of the soil. Initially on a quick look, all soil may look to be the same, but there's actually key and distinctive differences. So when we're looking at forensic science in particular, we're looking at where we're gonna find this. A lot of times we're inspecting footwear or tires, for example, where soil can get lodged in the tread. So this can help establish the likelihood that a person or object was present at the scene of the crime. So just finding soil uh, is one thing, but now identifying or potentially matching that soil up to a crime scene is the next step. So when we're looking at that soil, as far as a detail goes, there are different types of soils. So we can be looking at sandy soils. They have a high porosity. They have a relatively large particle size. Uh, gravel would be the largest, as we see over, uh, over in this direction. Sand is also quite large. Water drains very quickly through that. You can think of the beach. You watch a wave come over um, a sandy beach, and water drains right through it. Then we have silt soil, and this is like mid-size particles, and you may be saying that's a pretty big jump from sand to silt on the image, and while it is, clay is even smaller. But that silt being that mid-size, it's favorable for water holding, supporting plant growth. Typically a lot of uh, farm-type related soils um, have a good percentage of silt in them. Then lastly, we have clay, which is uh, has very small spaces. It's very, very fine particles. And because of that, those particles tend to fold and kind of lay together, almost looks like a folding of a pages of a book here, where they're kind of like stacking on top of one another. Uh, we can see that evident here, and that's what it tends to be so fine, it tends to get almost like a sticky-like consistency. When we're inspecting a sample of soil on a visual um, basis, uh, this is, can be used a microscope. We want to dry the sample and observe the color of that soil once dry. And we look at the particles that are present. When we remove any trace evidence that we may find, this could be fibers, glass, or hair, and compare observations with control samples or comparison of samples of crime scene to suspected uh, or potential uh, crime scenes there. Now we have chemical composition of soil samples, so taking it one step further than just the vis visible means, looking at what is the chemical makeup of that soil. So using a microscope, you want to take a subsample and a small drop of hydrochloric acid. The goal there is to see if one's added to the soil if bubbles are formed. Uh, it could also see if there's a color change in the soil. If you notice bubbles, that's the presence of carbonates such as chalk or limestone, and that can be an indication of some of the chemical composition of the soil. If there's a yellow color, that indicates the presence of iron. So some soils tend to be a little bit higher in iron, and this can be one way of determining that. We want to confirm the presence of iron by adding a few drops of potassium ferrocyanide, and this is in observing green color in that sample, and this will help you determine with a very small um, soil sample whether or not iron is present, which can help classify a soil. Another way to classify soil is looking at the organic matter. So if you have any gardens, a lot of people look at uh, what the organic matter is in their soil. It's prefer performed by what's called an ignition test, where you dry the sample, you weigh it, you heat the sample to a very um, high amount of heat, 750 to 800 degrees Celsius, for about an hour. Then you allow it to cool and you reweigh it, and you would calculate the percentage of loss on ignition. You're essentially burning off some of the components, particularly the organic components of that soil, and being left only with the minerals. And this can really help determine or classify a soil. As for example, on the extreme case, if someone walked through a potential compost pile, looking at a very high organic matter, and that could be a way to classify or identify that particular soil type. There's also soil's pH, which if you're looking at growing plants, something very important. Uh, also knowing the pH, this can provide a general idea of two soils if there could be a match. If we're having one that's really acidic or really basic, uh, is there a potential um, that they match? Or is it neutral? Is it an odd um, soil pH? Potentially, did it have limestone added to it? Or did it have potash added to it? That can vastly affect the soil pH compared to the native soil.
particle size distributions. This is referring to how much percentage of clay, silt, sand, and gravel um, is present in the soil. This can involve a set of uh, sieves to separate the particle based on their size and calculate the weights and percentage of each size. Just another factor, another way we can help classify that soil to get a little bit more specific. Uh, soil changes in different regions, so again, keep in mind that soil can change in small sections or in an area, and this could be in where there might be plant material, this could be the area where there's certain plants growing, what the land might, land might be used for, so all these need to be taken into consideration, and the soil sample should be taken as close to the suspected area where it was picked up on the tire tread or um, on the shoe as possible. The whole point and uh, goal of this kind of soil uh, investigation uh, is to provide uh, increased links. So it's very common in hit and run accidents, automotive accidents, burglaries, uh, outdoor scenes in general. So using the visual and chemical methods, the goal is to establish links from the recovered and standard soil sample, uh, which are very important in the great scheme of forensic science.